Good morning and welcome. It's Sunday the 30th of May. Welcome to our worship online from here to Manuel Southall in Weymouth. My name is the Reverend Matt and I'm the curate here, serving alongside the Reverend Joe, who we'll hear from later in this service. Whoever you are and wherever you might be joining us from, thank you for being a part of today's worship. If you're new here, then please do hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything new. And why not say hello via our Facebook page? We would love to know who you are. Well, in these last weeks, we've been looking at the great I am sayings of Jesus as recorded in the Gospel of John, through which Jesus describes who he is and what he means for us today. Well, today as the church celebrates and thinks about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, we're going to spend some time reflecting on why Jesus was able to use the same I am that God used as recorded in the book of Exodus. But as we begin, let me just pray for us all. Lord God, as we join together today to worship you from where we are, be with us all. Help us if we are feeling lost, lonely or confused by life. Help us to remember that we meet in the name of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. God is one. Amen. the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. 
The reading is taken from Exodus chapter 3 verses 13 to 18. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt, into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. Then the elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer a sacrifice to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Over the past few weeks, we've been exploring the I am sayings of Jesus. And our reading from Exodus reminds us just how totally outrageous it would have been for Jesus to call himself the I am, because this was the name of God. This is the name of God. This is how God referred to himself when he spoke to Moses. I am who I am. Now today in the church it's Trinity Sunday. It's the day we try and understand and grapple with the Trinity, with God, one God, three persons. And if we're totally honest, I'm sure none of us fully understand the Trinity. Many theologians have grappled over the Trinity for centuries, and it's something that we try and understand, but all our understandings are pulled apart and we are left often scratching our heads. In North Yorkshire, are the ruins of an old monastery called Fountains Abbey. And if you visit there today and you read their guidebook, it says this. Here in the chapter house, the monks gathered every Sunday to hear a good sermon from the abbot, except on Trinity Sunday, owing to the difficulty of the subject. 
One of the reasons the Trinity is so difficult to understand is that the church has come to this understanding of God from study of the whole Bible, from creation right through to Revelation. And there's no single passage, there's no single piece of scripture that truly explains, explains the Trinity for us. The reality is that nothing we can ever say about God will ever do justice to who he is. And no sermon ever preached on Trinity Sunday or any other day will ever give us a full understanding of the true Ein God. The Athanasius Creed makes this clear. It says, the Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Ghost incomprehensible. There are not three incomprehensibles, but one incomprehensible. In his sermon on Trinity Sunday, Michael Sadgrove, the now retired Dean of Durham Cathedral, said, perhaps what the preacher on Trinity Sunday should be saying is that there's nothing he can say. And when we cannot speak, we must not speak. On this holy ground, we can only be silent. And so maybe the abbot of Fountains Abbey wasn't avoiding a tricky subject, but instead showing great wisdom and allowing space for contemplation. So today, instead of attempting with words to explain the unexplainable, I'm gonna use an image, an icon, in fact. It may be a familiar image to you, or you may have never seen it before. But today I'm going to use it to help us grapple with who God is and to give us a deeper insight into God, into I am. The icon is written by Andre Rublev and it's titled Trinity. Before I say anything, I'd like you to spend a moment looking at it. What catches your attention? What is your eye drawn to? Listen to God. See what he may be saying to you and teaching you about himself through this image. Notice the three people within the image. They have identical features. Look at their faces. They are exactly the same. Yet they are three figures. The unity is depicted in their face. It depicts their oneness. We worship a God who is three persons, but yet one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each equally God. In the picture, each figure is of equal size. Each has a halo over their heads, all equal. Each has wings, again, all equal in size. And each wears blue, the colour of divinity. They have equal status. They are equally divine. Each member of the Trinity is equally God and equally divine. And we say this, or sometimes we sing this, when we say the creed. 
or sing the creed. Each member of the Trinity has equal status. However, as you look at the image, there does appear to be some sort of order within it. In the picture, the Father is represented on the left. The Son is in the centre and the Holy Spirit is to the right. The Son and the Spirit incline their heads towards the Father. They look to him. He holds his head high and directs his gaze back at them. They are in relationship with one another. We see here a picture of a relational God. And this matters because we are not only made for relationship, but we are made by relationship. If God was simply one, then he could be loving, but he in himself could not be love. Instead, we have a God who is in relationship, a loving relationship. He is love. Notice the figure on the left representing the father, wearing a shimmering robe over his blue garment. The robe looks almost transparent. He is the hidden creator. Notice the sun, the middle figure. He wears the deepest colours, a thick, heavy garment of reddish brown earth and a cloak of the blue of heaven. He unites heaven and earth. And through his earthly garment is a band of gold. He is the king who descends to serve as priest to the people. Notice the spirit, the figure on the right. This figure wears a green cloak, symbolizing new life. Notice that each figure ho holds a staff. And this raises the question, why would winged characters able to fly be holding a staff? Why do they need a staff? What's the significance of them? The staffs are significant, not because God requires a staff, but because he chooses to join us on our journeys. Yes, he could fly, but yet he chooses to walk, to walk alongside us. The staff is representative of God's desire to join us in our human journey. Not because he needed to, but because he loves us. Above each of the figures is an object. Above the spirit is a mountain. Throughout the Bible, Mountains are seen as significant places. God met Moses up a mountain when he gave him the Ten Commandments. Jesus regularly went up the mountain to pray and worship his Father. They came to be known as places of prayer and worship. They are places of intimacy with God. Part of what the Holy Spirit does in joining us on our journey is leading us up the mountain, leading us to a place of praise and worship where we can connect with God. Above the sun, notice the tree. 
The tree represents the tree of the Garden of Eden, which Adam and Eve ate from, and therefore it symbolises the fall. The consequence of this are obvious. We see it all around us, suffering, pain, death, and a damaged relationship with God. The Son came to restore that relationship, to restore humanity's relationship with God. The tree is a reminder of this. Humanity messed up, but because of Jesus and what he did in coming to earth, dying and rising again, this relationship is put right. The picture shows the cost of this. Set right in front of Jesus is a chalice. This is the symbol of Jesus' death. Because of Jesus' death on a tree, on the cross, the sin that entered the world through a tree in the Garden of Eden is put right. The relationship is restored, but this did not come without great cost, a personal cost to God. The final picture is of a house. This is set above the Father. This is the end of the story. Jesus told his disciples that in his father's house there are many rooms and he was going to prepare a place for each of them. That is what he's doing right now. He is preparing a place for everyone who believes and trusts in him in his father's house. Notice the table. The Trinity is sitting on three sides of a four-sided table. We are invited into the space. We are invited into this relationship. As we contemplate the mystery of the Trinity, as we read scripture, as we ponder this image, we see an intimate relationship between the three persons of the Godhead. We see love. But we also see God's love for humanity and the price that he paid because of his love for humanity. We are invited to sit at the table we are invited to join this relationship, to share this meal. I am invites us, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Not three, but one. One in relationship, one in love. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned.
join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. Please do say hello via our Facebook page. And remember that you can now join us in person on a Sunday morning for our services. You just need to book in to save a seat. So as we finish and go out into our day, let me just pray for us all. So let's pray. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.